Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to a Friday Algorithm Show. In today's video, I would like to talk to you guys about something called an abstract syntax tree. So this is kind of a complicated subject and uh, I'm going to assume that a lot of you guys have probably not heard of what this concept is. So in today's video, let me go over exactly what this tree is, uh, what it helps us do, and then a simple, uh, pretty common interview question that you'll run into uh, if you're trying to get a job as a software developer. So let's go ahead and get started with a very, very simple example of what this is kind of used for here. We have highlighted inside of Swift, inside of Playgrounds, this expression of five plus 25 times six. So this is just plain old math, right? And you and I, we can kind of look at this and see exactly what this evaluates to. And the answer is 155, it's not important, but we kind of follow the order of operations and then we just know what uh, 625 and the value of 5, what these values are, we just know. So if I copy and paste this guy, this is the interesting part, I promise you, we paste that into the compiler on the right side, we get the value of 155. The question is, uh, how is the compiler so smart that it knows exactly what we mean by the characters of 5, 25, 6, and how does it know what the operations mean of multiplication and plus? So, uh, typically, a compiler will break down what you're typing into it, and then it constructs it inside of something called an abstract syntax tree, right? And uh, in this use case, we kind of break it down into this tree right here. The very top node, the root node, is a plus node, and the right side is a 5, and the left side is the multiplication of 25 and 6, right? So a pretty simple tree right here. Uh, you kind of have to understand that this expression breaks down into this tree, and uh, now we can sort of talk about uh, what kind of data structure we use to represent this, this tree right here. So the interviewer now will tell you, uh, I will give you this node class, and it has four, four good old properties on it. And the first property is operation of plus, minus, star, and division. Uh, it also has a value of, uh, a property of value, which is a float left child and right child of node. So we are going to use this class right here to kind of represent this tree. And if we kind of look at the more easy use case, the node of six right here, the six guy right here, has an operation of nil, value of six, and the left child, right child is nil because it doesn't have any children. And then if we are looking at the star node, uh, the operation is the star for multiplication. The value is going to be nil, left child, right child will be the 25, and then the six. And then very, very similarly for the plus, you have the operator of plus right here, and then you have the right child of the five and the left child of this multiplication guy. So that's kind of how this abstract syntax tree works. And uh, at this point in time, the interviewer will tell you, okay, I will give you this function evaluate, and I want to implement, or I want you to implement uh, the function so that if I feed in, for example, this tree, represented by this node right here, it needs to return the actual evaluation of that entire tree to give me a floating point value like that. All right, so this is a very, very typical problem that computer science students uh, learn in their first couple of years. And uh, we will now try to solve this problem. All right, so right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you that uh, if you've never encountered this problem set before, it's going to be pretty overwhelming and you basically will not most of the time you probably will not come up with the correct solution because it's a pretty hard problem. And uh, to solve this today, let me walk you through the very, very base use case or the easiest uh, use case first, and then we will kind of build up uh, to get to the final solution. All right, and <laughs> this problem is kind of hard to walk through, so I'm gonna try my best to make it as straightforward as possible. And uh, it's going to involve recursion. That's what makes it really, really difficult to walk through. All right, question is, what is the most basic use case for this problem? And I'm going to just try to represent the very first value of perhaps six. So imagine we had this mathematical expression of just six. It needs to evaluate down to six, right? Pretty simple stuff. And to represent this node, let's create it. Let node equals no operation of nil value of six left and right child is going to be nil and now i'll call this function with the node guy right here and so node is going to evaluate to something like zero in this implementation and that's obviously incorrect 
So how do we fix this? Well, this is pretty simple. If you just check the values, uh, nodes value like this. So instead of calling this node and node here, uh, let me fix this with just calling it perhaps six node. And sometimes the playground uh, program breaks down like that. So let's go back to our file and we have node.value, right? So let me just replace the six node down here. So this node guy, we need to check if the value of the node is actually some kind of value. And if it's not equal to nil like that, we will just return the node.value and unwrap it kind of unsafely like that. Okay. So evaluation of the six node now just returns the value of six. So pretty straightforward. If you perhaps change this to 25 for the six node, this now gives you 25. So nothing too special, just a plain old null check and then just returns the node's value. So to make this a little bit more difficult, let's just change this to six plus five. Okay. So this tree now needs to be perhaps a plus right here. This include another space and this tree now looks like a six and then a five like that. So six plus five. And to represent this tree, we need two additional nodes. First, let me create the five node like that. A node operation of nil, five, nil, nil. So the value is five. And let me use the plus node right here. So let plus node equals node of operation of this plus string guy. And the value is nil. Left child is the six node in this case. And the right child is the five node like that. All right. So we now have this uh, tree structure that represents five plus six. And let's evaluate the plus node down here. So this is going to be five plus six, which should be 11. Now it's going to return a value of zero because the plus node, its value in this case is just nil giving us this return value. So to make the implementation a little bit more intelligent, let's just say something like this. If node dot operation, if this is equal to this plus guy right here, if it's the plus operator, we will simply do something very, very naive here first, which is the, let's see, return the value of node. We're going to return left child's value. And then we're going to add it with the right child's value like this right here. So let me just fix a couple of these syntax errors and we need to unwrap these guys. Otherwise it doesn't know how to add these op optional float values. Okay. So now the function has been improved to detect the plus and then just unwrap the left child and unwrap the right child of five and six, adding it to become 11. So pretty naive right here, uh, the solution. And the reason why it's naive is because let's say now our node, our tree, uh, includes additional plus nodes inside of it. So to make it similar to this tree, I'm going to uh, change this six right here to be a plus like that. And then I will use a value of 26, 25, let's see, 25 and a value of six. So hopefully you guys can kind of see what this tree is. And basically this represents, uh, let's see, 20, five plus six plus five. So we're just adding the 25 and the six on this branch and then adding all that together to be uh, 36, I believe. Okay. So with this tree now, how do we represent this with the node class? Well, we need to change a couple of things inside of our nodes. And first I will say, let's uh, let me create the 25 node right here equals node with this operation of nil value is 25 left and right child is nil. Okay. So this plus node, I want to add the 25 and the six together first. So let's say the, let's see, let's change this the, to the left of 25 and the right of six node like that. And let me just change the name as well to be plus 25, six node. And then I'll say let root plus node equals some kind of node with the operation of plus again. And I'm going to create this root node up here to be the value of nil. And the left child is going to be the left side. So this is plus 25, six node. And the right child is just the simple good old five node like that. Okay. So now that we have our node, I need to evaluate this root plus node instead. So let me just paste that down there and see what we get. All right. 
So down here, you see this red error guide. And the reason why this is occurring is because, well, let's walk through what the algorithm is doing right now. And so the root plus node is coming in and the value is nil. So it's not going into this, uh, this if case. And it's running into this operation of plus now because the operation is plus. And the left child, what is the left child? Well, the left child is this plus 25, six node. And then it's trying to unwrap the value. So what is the value of this guy? Well, it is just the good old value of nil. And when you apply the bang operator on the nil, uh, the nil value, it will crash with this warning right here. So it's trying to unwrap a, an optional value that you can't unwrap. So that's what's happening. And what is the fix here? So I'm just going to tell you is to apply recursion. And the rec recursion in this case is kind of tricky if you've never seen it before. So let me just type it out. Let me replace the left child with the evaluate of the node's left child right here. And I need to unwrap it because this expects a non-optional node. So having unwrapped this guy on the left side, it's going to evaluate the left to be 25 plus six and then add the right side, which is just the five value in this case, this five node, and then we get the value of 36. So that's kind of how this works. And the reason why the recursion evaluates to the value of 25 and six is because, let's just see what it's doing. Uh, if we are the plus node, the root plus node, this left child is this plus node right here. And then it's basically calling the evaluation on the plus 25, six node, which does this right here. So evaluate uh, plus 25, six node. And that this gives us the value of uh, 31. So what it's doing is that it's recursing on the left branch with the operator and the values on the left and right child. And that's kind of how that works. Basically, at the very end of the, uh, the recursion, the terminating case is what we call the leaf node. And in the leaf node, we just have values and at the very end, it just gives us the value. And to fix something that's kind of wrong uh, in this implementation right now, is to also apply the evaluation on the right node. So let me just do that, apply the right, get rid of that little warning pop-up, and evaluate the right node as well. And the reason why we're doing that is because the right side of this tree can also contain other operation nodes. Okay, so that is what we have. Now, to bring us all the way back to this original tree of five plus 25 times six, we can just simply say 25, see 25 times six plus five. This is exactly the same thing as that, just written in, I guess, reverse order is what you would call it. And so now that we have 25 times six, we need to replace the plus node with the multiplication node. So mult 25 and six, change the operation to multiplication. And uh, now what do we have? We need to replace this plus with the multiplication node now. And what do we get inside of our loop? Well, we get the value of zero right here for some reason. And at the very end, we just get the value of five. So what's happening? What is happening with our entire tree? So because the operation of star, the multiplication value right here, because it's never, uh, is never entering this guy right here, it's always just returning a zero. And in this case, the left branch is just returning zero, and then the right branch is returning the value of the right child, which is just, uh, just five in this case, giving us zero plus five, which is just plain old five. And that's why we get this five value right here. To fix this, we will introduce else if node.operation is equal, equal to this star guy. And then we just apply the same old thing, but change the uh, the operator to multiplication. So having changed this, the entire evaluation now returns as 155. So that's pretty good. That's kind of how you would implement this entire uh, abstract syntax tree. And if you want to cover the use case of minus and division, it's very simple. First, let's use else if node operation of, if it's equal to this minus guy right here, we can just copy and paste this and then replace the multiplication with subtraction. So let's use this again with the node operation of uh, division like that. And let's just paste that in and replace this with division. Okay, 
So this gives us the entire implementation or close to what the entire thing would look like. Uh, one thing that you have to worry about is when you're trying to divide by zero. So this operation, if it's equal division and perhaps if, uh, let's see, if the nodes, uh, let's see, this is, let me just comment this, if node, uh, let's see, right child is zero, uh, you need to throw an error. Basically, you can't uh, divide by zero inside of a mathematical expression. This doesn't really make any sense. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Now, abstract syntax trees are pretty complicated if you've never had to kind of work with them before, but hopefully throughout this video, you've learned kind of how to deal with them. I remember the source code for all of this stuff, the Playgrounds file, is available down below. Uh, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And that's going to be it for me. Keep on coding, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.